Hello, my name is Art Bell, and I am fortunate enough to serve as principal at BB Junior High School, grades 7 and 8. Uh, it is my pleasure to talk to you today about uh, some things at the junior high, a logistical plan that we have put into place in order to ensure the safety uh, and the effective use uh, of the building for, for our students and our, our staff uh, at the junior high. Here's a building map of the junior high. I wanted to go ahead and go over this slide with you first so you'll understand some things as we progress through this short presentation. First couple of things I want you to notice highlighted here is the turf room, which is what we use for some athletic teams and cheer and dance. And also we have it listed up here in our gymnasium. It says inclement weather. So those are two key locations you're gonna to need to know where those are with respect to the building uh, as I progress through this presentation. The other reason to put this map up here is to show you our three entry points that we're going to utilize in the mornings when students come in to go to their first period class. This, this entry point here in the commons area is, is the entry point that we've used for several years now, okay? And most of the time we just have one big entry point. We have now expanded that to three different points. There will be two other sets of doors on the east side of the building where students will enter. And again, I'm going to go over that information with you in just a second, but I wanted you to kind of get a visual of the building entry points and locations where students will gather um, in the mornings and at lunch uh, when we have inclement weather. So this first slide is about morning drop-off and afternoon pickup. In the mornings uh, on a normal day it won't be much different. Uh, students will stay outside in the commons. We will, we will take precautions for them to socially distance from each other and, and they will wait there until it's time to come into the building through one of the three entry points. Um, we do have students that will eat breakfast in the morning and so they will go into the cafeteria. We will have maps set up of seats where they can and cannot seat in order to socially distance. Uh, but they'll remain in the cafeteria. This is a small change. Uh, these students who eat breakfast will remain in the cafeteria until their respective bell rings either at 750 or 755. The change in that is that students when they come in to eat in the years past we've allowed them to go back out to the commons but in order to keep students socially distanced we're going to keep them in the cafeteria. Uh, same in the library. We have a lot of students that like to um, go to the library before school to check out a book or to hang out with friends or to read or work on homework. Uh, we're still going to allow that, but we're, obviously there's going to be a limited number of students in there. And that number is going to be uh, quite a few less than it has been um, in the last few years. And again, students will remain in the library until their respective bell rings. Now, if we have inclement weather, if it's super cold outside or it's raining and storming, uh, we'll do things a little bit differently. When students arrive and they get dropped off in a car or they get off the bus at, at the bus stop there, um, they'll, they'll, they'll be divided into two different groups and they will go to either our gymnasium, where traditionally where we keep students in the mornings and at lunch on inclement weather days. But now we will also use our turf room, which was highlighted in that first slide, in order to split our students up into two big locations where they can safely socially distance themselves. And we'll have them divided into two groups. Right now, we're, we, we, we say we're going to do it alphabetical. It could be seventh and eighth grade, but right now we have it, we'll have it done by the alphabet. That kind of tells them where to go, and they'll know to go there uh, anytime we have a, a, a bad weather. Uh, we'll place tape on the walls of the turf room and the bleachers in, in the gym in order for students to know where they can and can't sit, just like in the cafeteria. And in the afternoons, we're really not going to change much with our afternoon pickup because we really don't have a whole lot of students that, that get picked up in cars um, after school. So we're, uh, we're not going to make any, any major changes there. If we do have more students, an increased number that do get picked up in the afternoons, we will, we will just make those changes then. Okay, second uh, slide is transition time. So, like we normally have done in years past, uh, we will bring, we'll have two bells to bring students into the building. Again, this time through three entry points. That, where the eighth grade is going to enter first at the 750 bell, followed by the seventh graders at the 755 bell. All right. Again, three entry points, and this is going to be based upon a student's first period class. Depending on where their first period class is, that will tell them which of the three entry points to enter the building to keep students spaced out, okay? Um, another huge change this year is in order to cut down on loitering in the hallways and combat social distancing issues, uh, students will not be allowed to use lockers at the junior high this year. So we need to make sure that our students 
have backpacks and they carry them with them from class to class, but they will not have access to the lockers this year. Um, and, and not only will that help with social distancing, but it'll also it'll maximize instructional time because it will get students to class uh, quicker than normal. Uh, we will have teachers on duty uh, at the two sets of student bathrooms in between classes and they're only going to allow a limited number of students in at a time to keep the numbers down inside the restrooms in between classes. Now, another big change is we're gonna have two bells to dismiss from each period to go to the next period. For example, if the student's in first period class, the bell rings, normally we would have one bell, all students change to second period, and then we have a bell telling them it's time to start second period. Um, Instead, we're gonna ring that first bell at 846 at the end of first period, and that will indicate to our eighth graders that it's time to change classes. About two and a half minutes later, we'll have a second bell that will tell seventh graders, now it's time for me to move from my first period class to my second period class. So again, we're trying to cut down on the numbers in the hallway at the same time. Um, our exit strategy after school uh, to social distance will be like this. Uh, students will exit the nearest door in the hallway of their eighth period class. And that's not just the three entry points on the east side of the building of the map, but also we can use the doors on the west side of the building too. So we have more exit points than we do entry points in the morning. Um, as far as who gets dismissed and, and at what time, um, bus riders will be dismissed first. That is our largest population of students, in, typically speaking. Uh, and, and then soon after that, a minute or two later, we will dismiss over the intercom our car riders, our, our students who get picked up, um, and then those who have after school extracurricular activities. Uh, with respect to lunch, uh, again, we're going to have two lunches. Uh, we'll have eighth grade lunch, which is immediately following fourth period, and seventh grade lunch, which is after their fifth period. Um, our eighth graders are pretty familiar with this system. The biggest change is that there's going to be two groups within 8th grade lunch and two groups within 7th grade lunch. So when 8th grade goes to lunch, group A will be out in the commons area or in the turf room slash gym in inclement weather while the first group eats. And then halfway through we will rotate those groups where they will not pass each other and, and each group will have plenty of time to eat, but we're, we're, that way we can put them in the cafeteria where there's not a student sitting on either side of them or students sitting directly across from them. So again, this is socially distancing the best that we can while still using um, our, our, our schedule and, our, and maximizing our time for lunch. Okay, um, so again, when group B is outside waiting for group A to eat lunch, they will, they will walk around to our gym and, and group A will go out from the cafeteria. So they'll be completely removed from the cafeteria before group B comes in and then they go through the line and sit down and eat their food. Um, so anyway, again, this, this will avoid groups A and B crossing paths. Now, uh, the gym and turf room we utilize for inclement weather days. Instead of, you know, when, when one group's outside while a group's eating, if it's bad weather, we'll put them in the gym or we'll put them in the turf room uh, in order for them to uh, stay away from the, the bad weather conditions. Okay. Thank you for your time. That's all I have at this point. I um, hope you know that uh, it is the... First and foremost, uh, importance for us at BB Junior High and BB Public Schools uh, to consider the safety and ensure the safety of your child and of our staff uh, while at school. Uh, and we hope that uh, you're excited for a great 2020-2021 school year. Stay safe. Thank you.